All right, y'all. So today I am reviewing this new AI startup called Fixer that promises that it can save you an hour every day by helping you organize your reply to your emails, you know, take notes on your meeting note taker. And we're going to see, we're going to see how it stacks up because it's got a hefty price tag and I have my own reservations, but we're going to, I haven't walked through it yet. I haven't done anything yet. We're going to do it all together. So stay tuned for that. Let's jump right in. Okay. So here we are on Fixer's website. Let's just, before we get into this, let's check on the pricing. It looks like, let's not do annual because we don't even know if we like this or not. We don't know if it's something we're going to want to use. So to start, we get a seven day free trial and we get, it's 30 bucks a month. That gives us one inbox calendar organization, sorting and labeling of every email, draft replies in your voice. Okay, so we get some draft, we get some AI drafted replies, uh, suggested meeting times that work, joins meetings and takes notes. We've got a note taking app in there as well and includes chat support. Okay, so the first thing that I notice about this, and, and I again, we, one of the things that they will do is they incorporate your email account with your calendar with all of your production project schedules and all of your meeting notes and all of that gets shared inside of your little own ecosystem inside of like, like a business in a box where now the AI is collaborating with not just other people on the team to figure out who to assign tasks to based on what happened inside of a meeting, but also is clarifying inside of the calendar, knows, has access to your emails as well so that they can respond and craft those sort of responsive emails and actually have access to calendars and things that will help manage that. And you can also do stuff that's outside of like a Google calendar as well if you use something different than that. So the value in value proposition inside of something like motion is significantly higher, I think, than inside of Fixer. And I'm not entirely sure, as we, before we even get into this, what this is going to mean. Like, what am I paying the 30 bucks for? Because think about it. If you already have Zoom, Zoom's got AI notes. You've already got a Google calendar and you're using something like Sane later to sort of organize your calendar. Really what you're getting in this is you're getting... Um, drafted replies in your voice. And I don't know, I, 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 how necessary is that? You guys are going to have to answer, you'll have to answer that for me because I don't actually know. But in my experience, usually the stuff that I want to reply to, I need to kind of reply myself. It's not something that the AI is going to pick up on. And what normally happens with most of the services that you use is it starts responding to anything that looks like it might need a response. And so then your draft folder just gets layered with all kinds of these draft responses to cold email inquiries. I mean, I've even had situations where I, I mean, I probably get, I get a ton of cold email inquiries every single week and I have all of these draft notes of my AI responding, trying to set meetings with people who have reached out cold that I have no interest in talking to. And all I can figure, um, and it, the, I'm lucky that they stay in the draft folder because if they automatically sent those, man, my calendar would be booked with a whole bunch of meetings I didn't want. And so I'm also not entirely sure how effective the AI draft replies is going to be inside of Fixer. But let's go ahead and let's just get started. Let's start with a free trial. I'm going to try and use this um, this account that I've got so we can test it out. But let's go, let's continue with Google. We're going to use my dummy account, not dummy account, but my throwaway account. We're going to set up my account and yep, select it all, continue. Uh, it's a 14 day trial. I can skip this for now. Annual $37 monthly is, wait a minute, hang on, what? Start your 14, very, no upfront fees. So $37 per month billed annually, $50 a month. Wait, I thought that the, well, this isn't a good start. I thought that on their uh, pricing page, they said that my monthly fee was $30 for starter, not 50. So what's it doing here? And now I got a 14 day free trial instead of a seven day free, they upped their prices. Hold, what? Unlimited connected inboxes and calendars, email sorting and uh, categorizing, draft replies, custom brand meeting note taker, advanced team level, but what if I don't need all of this? Well, all right, well let's, so they wanna, they wanna get me in on the annual plan, I don't wanna do that, but let's just see, I'm gonna go ahead and sign up here 
and see how well it works. All right, let me give them my bank account information. We'll come back after that. And all right, so here we are in the dashboard payment. It ended up being $54 after the 14 day free trial. If you uh, are interested in that, I don't know why the website says it's cheaper than that. Apparently they've modified their pricing a little bit, um, which is fine. I just wish they would have up, up, updated their website as well. Okay, so I got a couple of notifications here. Email setup complete and then asking me to refer a friend. I will not. So your next meeting could change everything. View meetings, all meetings, upcoming meetings. Okay, record a meeting. And what do I do in here? Meeting title, enter meeting title, default microphone. So can I, can I actually use this like a Google Meet? Let's just see. Failed to create audio file. Well, I would think so because I haven't actually done anything yet. Meeting recordings, record a meeting. Stop this. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Upload recording, record via a mic. Okay, test two. We're gonna use my microphone, then go ahead and start the recording. All right, so now we're, oh, I see. Okay, so this is just recording. So I have to record this separate. So basically, if I go into a meeting, I'm on a phone call or whatever, as long as I can capture the audio coming in through the microphone, it's gonna go ahead and record my voice. The question is, is it record the person on the other end? I'm guessing not because we, how are they gonna, I was only able to give it access to one microphone, but I am getting a nice transcription in here as well. So I, yeah, again, I don't know how useful that would be, but all right, let's just go ahead and stop that. And then let's see what it gives us. And so, okay, so we've got just my side and it has undefined and edit speaker name. So I gotta, do I have to do that for everyone? I would assume I do. Oh yeah, I'd have to define every speaker's name in here and then, Share a copy, summary, call recording capabilities. Recording likely captures only the local microphone audio. Well, why does, do you not know? Only the user's voice is being recorded. The app generates transcription, remote audio. Okay, this is just, so let me, allow me to compare and contrast. So this is the meeting notes that I get from Fixer. If I go over and we take a look at something like um, something like motion inside of my meeting notes. If I click on, let's say a recent meeting that I had with a client of mine, not only do I get all of the video in here of our conversation, but underneath I get a full recap of the meeting notes. I also, if she is part of my team or is part of something internally that was on there and there are things, action items that need to get done, I can either choose to accept those as things that I need to do or assign them to someone else. And the cool thing about Motion is that if they're inside of your team, Motion knows who's responsible for what because it access to your notes, all of your meetings, your calendar. It knows all the people on the team and what they're responsible for. It will auto assign people to the tasks that you discussed in the meeting. So you didn't, don't even really have to think about it. And then I get an entire breakdown of all the notes of everything that we discussed and the full transcript. Now that's just wildly different than what we're seeing here. Um, and so let's go back and take a look at this so meeting notes dashboard. Categorization. All right, so to respond, I don't need that notifications, awaiting reply. I don't know the difference between to respond and awaiting reply. Need your response versus awaiting reply, awaiting for their reply. Oh, okay. Um, and then resolved and completed. Respected. Let's go ahead and update the preferences. Okay. Now let's jump back in. Let's take a look. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, 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 uh. Apple's reminding me my payment is due. So let's see how accurate it was at figuring this stuff out. So Apple payment reminder, that notification is good. Alex, my free trial. Hey, Jason, your Fixer AI is live. We'll email you a draft of every meeting. Um, to get started, send your first email. Head to the to respond label in your inbox. So do I have a to respond label? Oh, we do. It's all right in here. To respond. I have two that say to respond. Let's keep going here. There's another one to respond from Fixer. Reddit is a notification. What is this? Oh, this is a this is a game I tried to sign up for to check out. So what about the rest of them? Let's try and refresh and see if I get more. 
So it's only been the recent ones that have come in. It's not going to try and do anything that's that old. So basically it went back to, this day is the 28th, so it went back to the 23rd and it started classifying them. They didn't classify the security alert. And so, okay. But again, I guess I guess my question with this is, how is this any better than something like Sane Later, where I can literally go in and just with simple drag and drop? Because I'm going to have to do this as well. Like, let's say this isn't a to respond, right? So let's come in here. How do we delete it? And then how do I put it in the right box? I'm so confused. Yeah, that's my inbox. I know it's my inbox, but what? how do I, how do I put it into the right inbox. Let's go back home, categorize, back to Gmail. I, so those are all notifications, so that's good. Let's see, updates, these are all in notification. Okay. Again, I just don't know that, I, I don't know why this is any better than something like SaneBox for eight bucks a month, especially if you already have some sort of meeting note taker that is going to capture all that stuff for you. And then if you take a look again, if we go back to the pricing on this, this is the other thing that bothers me. So we know now it's 50 bucks a month. You can't get around that. That's the starter plan that they're going to give you now. Um, if we come look at motion and we take a look at their pricing package, well, they're starting around 30 bucks a month, but look at all the stuff that you get. You get all your project management, all your calendar and meetings, AI docs and wikis and notes, all of it searchable by the AI. You get sheets now where you can enter in spreadsheet data and have that accessible to the AI. Dashboards and reporting. You got, you know, applications so that you can take it with you wherever you go. Um, integration, like it's crazy the amount of stuff that you get for the $29 that you're paying here versus the $50 that you're going to pay over at Fixer. And I don't know. So you, got, you guys are going to have to help me out. You guys sh explain to me why you would use Fixer over something more robust like Motion. And is this, is this just AI hype at its worst? Is this just, oh, we've got an AI thing and so let's rush it to market and let's slap a big price tag on it and see if we can convince a bunch of people to pay for it so that then three months or four months later that they can figure out that, oh, this really isn't as useful as I thought it would be and they cancel the membership. I mean, that's what's happening with Lovable. Let's be honest. Lovable is just tanking in terms of its retention. Now, it's managed to apparently for at least a period of time figure out a way to make the numbers work so that they can show that they're still increasing, at least the last I read, they're they claim that they're still increasing the total amount of money they're making. Um, but people are tanking. They came in. It was this novelty. They played around with it. And then they realized, ah, yeah, this really isn't. I can't really just vibe code stuff. I actually have to understand a little bit about back end. I have to understand a little bit about how to program and how to design in order to make this thing do what I want. And without that, it's not much use to anybody. So this huge spike, everybody's excited. There's this novelty factor and then it crashes. And I just get the sense that companies like Fixer, and this is just my personal opinion, right? So don't yell at me. And you know, if you're part of Fixer and I'm wrong, let me know where I'm wrong so I could come back and kind of do another review. But this just seems like a, a very expensive email sorting service. Like I said, unless you don't need any, unless you need the other stuff, unless you need somebody to draft replies for you, unless you need somebody to uh, take meeting notes and you don't have another meeting note taker, then maybe you could justify 50 bucks a month for this. But hey, where am I right? Where am I wrong? Leave something in the comments and let me know. And hey, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share because I like doing these videos. I'd like to keep doing them. So let me know. And if there's something else you'd like for me to review, let me know that too. And I'll talk to you soon.